first of all, I want to thank uh, all of you for joining us. I do have a question before I start, and I, I, I wish you'd put something in the chat which we saved. So I had this idea that th this conference is one of a trifecta of um, sustainability efforts. In other words, we charge you a, a modest uh, registration. We have some expenses involved in the platform, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we also have the Scutum and we also have our textbook. And that's important if you're a nonprofit to sort of generate some revenues. We also accept donations. And um, But I was thinking, supposing we said it's $45 to come to this conference and you can bring someone for free. And I'm thinking maybe you'd get an invitation to your chairman. I don't want you to brown those, your chairman, but you know, uh, do that and the chairperson could decide to come or a colleague who you've talked about in differential equations or knowing the broad nature, for example, discussions about ethics, uh, discussions about AI that we try to have in this conference, maybe just giving people an option to bring a colleague for a sort of a complimentary um, could expand the uh, conference and uh, bring people into, uh, you know, considering modeling. Uh, we at Simeo wouldn't generate any uh, money except maybe you might come to the conference if you knew. Wow, I could, I could basically go for half price because I could split the cost with a friend, and that would be fine too. But I, I'd just like to know if you have any thoughts about. Uh, buy a registration and get one free. Do, do I sound like Walmart? I don't want to sound like that, but you know that's that's what that does sound like. Okay. But and, and, and Brian has not asked me how I'll ever administer this, <laughs> but no, I no, do no, love no, this no. idea. No, I do no, like no, this no. idea. Yeah. Well, I could have said 1.5 people, in which case it would have been traumatic. But uh, but anyway, uh, just that's a thought, and we may send out that, and you may see that next year. So. Uh, again, I want to thank you for uh, joining us in, in the fellowship. Um, we got I got great ideas. I'm, I'm drooling at the fact that I've been retired for 12 years and I really want to go back into the classroom. Um, uh, there's uh, lots more to come from Simiode. As you know, it's a resource place, but we're always increasing those. Uh, we're going to give you a survey and theoretically it's going to go out to you an invitation in the email. And uh, we'd like you to respond to that about the, the conference itself. Um, again, the recordings are available through March uh, for you, who is an attendee at the conference. But I think probably within a month or less, we will have all of the recorded talks, uh, not the discussions, but all of them out on our YouTube channel. And so the ones that you missed, you can see. It isn't interactive. We understand that, but at least you can uh, hear what the gist is. Um, I put this on before. I now know there are more people than there were before, and I'm going to start keeping talking fast so you can't read this because I don't want you to read this because I want you to know that it's a mistake to put so much text on and then keep babbling over that. So what I'm going to do is concentrating on the last sentence. The last sentence of this paper, which did a study on modeling and differential equations, says the results of this study indicate that apart from the fact that teaching DEs based on modeling approach can increase the ability to apply a mathematical knowledge in the field of engineering, it can also significantly enhance their problem solving skills and their mathematical performance. This is in a paper that just came out this week, and it's uh, it isn't even in, it's a pre-publication of it um, in the International Journal of Math, Education, and Science and Technology, the British Journal. And what I want to point out is this is a paper from two colleagues from Iran. So those of us who live in the United States, we hear the word Iran or Iranian, and not good things night after night in the evening news. And I wanted to point out that teaching mathematics um, and using modeling and trying to inspire our students goes across all borders, goes across all political spectrums. And I want to be able to thank, and I will when I get done, write to my colleagues here, who, not my colleagues yet, but uh, Jalay and Nassim, and thank them for this paper. It's a rather extensive study um, and well worth the, the read. And, if you remember the MAA, the journal is free to you. 
Um, and if you're not, you probably can see through your library portal how to get it. Um, anyway, uh, and then I want to make a pitch for the current uh, issue of that journal has a special issue using modeling to motivate and teach differential equations. I was invited to be a guest editor by the uh, uh, editor who lives in uh, Britain. And of course, when you submit a paper to a British journal, they go through and change all the words center and they end them in RE, they add L's into modeling and you go, um, all right, we're colonies and we broke free, but we're willing to respect your spelling. So we go ahead and do that. Um, this was the editorial uh, group that uh, edited that special issue. There are 396 pages, 24 articles, all about teaching differential equations and all with double L's. Uh, when I uh, turned a journal that I began called Primus over to Taylor and Francis, um, they insisted that there be exactly 96 pages, no more, no less. That's when you printed journals. And so when I took on this editor role and the lead editor on this one, I said to them, what are the page limitations? And they go, there are none. And I thought, okay, so we got maybe 28 articles submitted and we accepted 24 of them. The editorial group did a lot of work as did the authors, but I think you'll find the papers fascinating. Uh, some of them are rich in history. Some of them are rich in uh, details and numerical work and all kinds of things, okay? So uh, I want to thank again our special organizers, our three students, Anna, Betram, and Gavin, and uh, Yan Ping, who's now off celebrating Lunar New Year's with her friends. And of course, to Lee Noble, who is the guy behind the curtains and who makes things work and who answers my emails in panic all the time. He's not panicked, I am. Um, so uh, I very much appreciate that. And uh, I thank the presenters for sharing your good news. And I thank you for joining us at this conference. Uh, I, I want you to take care and travel safe, which means, you know, get from your office to your dinner table. Probably that's the extent of it right now. And uh, we wish you success and joy in, in your work. So I'm sort of finished here. Uh, we, this isn't a uh, testimony time, but if there's something that you wanted to say or some particular thing that you valued that you think maybe we ought to do more of, uh, let's not go the negative here because, um, you know, I don't want to hear from some guy from Embry-Riddle because I just don't want to hear from those kind of guys. I don't want to hear that, okay? But uh, are there things that you want to say that, you know, uh, were particularly valuable to you and, and we might do more of. Let's leave it at that, okay? Yeah, uh, thanks for inviting. I, I don't know how you get the participants that come, but they're they're very insightful. I learned a lot in uh, in listening to the, the discussion and dialogue of the people invited, so thank you. And uh, I'm gonna plug in one thing that, one, I, I learned so much from the, from the from the uh, conference this term. But then I think my favorite is when Caesar said he gets the students to graffiti his school with chalk, because that got me thinking like, holy, not, I don't encourage people to graffiti their school, but like, holy crap, that seems like such a neat idea, right? How do I, yeah, that's like. Does, that's Caesar, does he suggest where they graffiti? Uh, <laughs> some locations, it's an extra credit that I do for calculus one and graphing. I give them non-trivial functions to graph. And then I tell them, I give them the chalk. I tell them the graph has to be at least four by four feet. And I give them all directions. And then I give them some locations that they can go and deface with mathematics. So the campus at University Park absolutely prohibits that type of thing. You know, being in, you know, one of the satellite campuses at Berks, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a rebel, I think. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think one of the themes that's come through there is give students the chance to be creative, give students some choices. Uh, I know when I when we taught at West Point, those students don't have that many choices, so any choice is good. But um, giving them choices about what model, giving them choices about what variables, giving them choices to where to put their graffiti, 
uh, at Sarah was talking about giving their choices and what their project wants to be. I think that's that's a risk faculty take. And there are sometimes it it doesn't work as well as you thought it might for a particular group. And then it's worth talking to them about. Or it might be they have a dysfunctional group, right? Socially, they, they just didn't get along. Um, one year I had a group of students and I, I, I told them, tell me who you want to work with and tell me who you don't want to work with. So I put them in groups of three. Next day I came back in, they did some work and this one woman came up and said, I told you I didn't want to work with that man in my group and you put me in the group. I, I, I made a mistake. And so I said, well, first of all, I'll back, I, it's hard to change it. You've already invested in group work so far. I will back you up, okay? It turns out that she didn't want to be in the group with that guy because he was sexist. He was lazy. He never did what he said he was going to do. And what happened is over the three weeks of the projects, she shaped him up so that <laughs> he wrote the outline. He did the presentation. He answered the questions. She came to me three months later and said, I have a, com com um, a commandant's board. She was about to be thrown out of the academy. And the reason was she couldn't control her alcohol. She had gotten a little out of hand. I, did, I didn't hear this from her, but from somewhere else. She said, would you write a letter in support of me? And I said, certainly. And in that letter, I pointed out how you want someone like this in your army, because here's what she did to this fellow cadet. And I was told by people who sit around in a board like a jury and read every piece of evidence out loud that that letter is one of the key points as to why she came back. So my point is that even if you make mistakes sometimes in groups, certain good things can still happen. You try not to. Um, nowadays, with the communications the way it is, kids can communicate and get together on Zoom. So you. You don't always have to worry about who's a commuter, who lives in the dorm and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, uh, group work is valuable and important. And I've had students say, well, what if I go to a company and they don't let me work in a group and I have to work by myself? And the other kids in the class said, you should quit that company. Um, so uh, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences about uh, how you work with groups. And um, uh, let's see, is there any chats uh, anybody want to speak up not I, I would love to hear any thoughts about the platform itself yeah uh, how easy or hard it was to navigate in and out I know there's have been some issues with people having problems connecting um and whether it was I don't know better or worse than what you were hoping I think it was amazingly smooth, you know, far better than an awful lot of the Zooms I've been in. Really, really good. Okay. The, the layout is, is very straightforward. I like that very much. Yeah, there, there, there was no learning curve. It, it just, uh, it was obvious what to do. And uh, it, yeah, it worked great. Well, I'm old enough that it wasn't that easy. <laughs> Lee always got me through the problems mm -hmm. and... Uh, I have some specific thoughts I'll send you by email. I'm just well, this, exhausted at this point. The survey will prompt you to give some feedback on the platform, okay, as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm with Beverly. I'm old enough that I had problems sometime, but I would turn to Lee. And, and I want to give a special thanks to Lee for um, being the backbone and, and running things. Oftentimes, you don't see who runs things in the background, but because Lee is a PhD in uh, mathematics and because he's been a colleague and a friend of mine for so many years, he's part of our, our team, but he's also super knowledgeable about tech things. And one of the things, if you go to his house, you'll see composition notebooks. I don't know how many he has, but he keeps copious notes <laughs> in these composition notebooks. And most importantly, he knows how to find the information. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> without, without Lee, Simeo does not exist. Um, He's a real paper 
physical notebooks? Yeah, yes, I, I was just gonna pick it up, but I think it's on my couch. <laughs> it's right, not right next to me. <laughs> yeah, Com composition. <laughs> we when we first founded Simiode, we would meet at Simiode World Headquarters, which was my dining room table, and uh, there'd be three of us getting together, and Lee would have this composition notebook and he'd be writing in it and then eventually I'd he he would say this is like volume nine I don't know what what he's up to now but uh but he also has electronic notes obviously yeah, yeah. <laughs> highly capable of doing that but um uh, it uh, uh it's nice to have colleagues to work with on a project that are there we're trying to build Simiode to be self-sustaining, and thanks to the work of Kurt in publishing the remarkable book, um, Kurt, um, and, and the workshops that we've been able to do, uh, what we're trying to do is develop a sustainability so there's just enough revenue stream to pay someone to do what I do because I do it out of passion and I'm retired, and maybe recognize a tenure track, a tenured professor who could get release time for this and, and pay for that, as well as to run the conferences and to do those other things and to become an entity, um, recognizing much like Cody that sometimes things just don't always last, you know, and uh, or they take up, they take on a different form. When I turned over the editing of Primus, the journal. Uh, it was like giving away a baby that I had been nurturing for 20 years, but it was so wonderful to just watch what they did with it. And I went to meetings and I never said a word. I never said, you should. I didn't like when you, I just didn't say anything. And I've never said anything like that, except to smile. And uh, so hopefully someday there'd be a simio that, that, that keeps on going. We've been doing it now for 10 years. We're talking about a large NSF proposal with uh, people from Florida Polytech University to step the level up, to do more. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but at the same time, it maintains itself. So I wanna thank you all for coming. And um, unless there's further comment, I'm gonna shut this off because I wanna see if Taylor Swift's plane actually got here from Japan to the uh, Super Bowl. This is very important to know this information. I'm told. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, it was great. All right, Everybody well, give yourself a hand, too. Yes, Everybody thank you very much. Take care. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.